two years ago I said that since the left was busy trying to collapse the system and destroy capitalism, there's no way they'd have any record to run on. I told you two years ago, the only way they could win, the only thing that the only weapon they'd have left would be race two years ago. They must have civil unrest. They must pit us into black and white. It's what I told you they would do back in January. I said during the summer they're going to make it about black and white. They're going to make it about race because they will have nothing left. All of these things will start to come undone. They will have no place to go. They must have the race riot. They must have the races pitted against each other. They're pitting us against each other in every step of the way. And I also told you that race riots were part of this administration's plan for re-election. They will only have race to be able to pit us against each other. So they will have, they will do everything they can to pit us against each other. That was in 2010 and then the second clip was from 2011. They have and continue to do just that. A house divided against itself cannot stand. And they've done it in every way they can. They've used class warfare, race warfare, Occupy Wall Street, the vilification of the wealthy. They've used a phony war on women. Even though nobody is talking about contraception, nobody is talking about banning that. The only ones that are doing that are the media and the White House. It's a distraction to divert your attention away from the accomplishment void administration and the miserable economy and gas prices. But the biggest weapon they have in their arsenal is rising racial tensions. And look how it is now being stoked. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, a dirtbag who lost his dad to a murderer, along with an accomplice, decided to go on a revenge murder spree. He posted on Facebook, Today is two years that my dad has been gone, shot by an effing N-word. Now here's where the stoke comes in, as if that's not bad enough. The stoking comes from CNN. A reporter actually says the F-word and the N-word live on the air. Now why on God's green earth would anybody feel it's necessary to say that? Remember, this is coming from the same network that actually stopped dead stop in the middle of a program and apologize for saying the word target on air. Yet they were okay with this. In the aftermath, another CNN reporter actually suggested reporters should, should replace using the phrase N-word with the actual N-word. They are fanning the flames. And the Black Panthers are there. And they're coming unhinged. Listen to this audio. It's an incredible piece of audio of a conference call that happened last week in Florida of the Black Panthers. Tell me the people holding this conference call, the Black Panthers, shouldn't be in jail. Listen. I just want to say to all the listeners that's on this phone call, if you are having any doubts about getting suited, booted, and armed up for this race war that we in that has never ended, let me tell you something. The things that's about to happen to these honkies, these crackers, these pigs, these pink people, these mother purple people, it has been long overdue. What she said was right. We got to suit up and boot up. We got to suit up and boot up and get prepared for the war that we're in. All your greats talked about there having to be bloodshed involved with revolution. True revolution means some bloodshed. So there's blood being spilled because there's a new life that is beyond this bloodshed. There's a new reality that is built upon your original African principles and spiritualities and values and norms that is beyond this bloodshed. But we got to go through it. And as the scriptures say, you got to cross it. We're going to have to cross the Red Sea. You're going to have to cross the Red Sea. I know y'all thought it was talking about some sea in some Middle Eastern part of the world. Hell no. We're talking about some blood. You're going to have to cross some blood and go through some blood and some battles. And there, there are those who wish they could stand in this hour to see the destruction of the devil's world and the devil's society. I'm talking about that blonde-haired Blue-eyed, sometimes brown-eyed, Caucasian 
walking around with a mindset, a demonistic mindset, and the nature to do evil and brutality. I say to everyone that is on this call right now, I'm coming out of the gate. My prize right now, this evening, is going to be the bounty, the arrest, dead or alive, for George Zimmerman. You feel me? To every brother, to every female. I am for violence. If nonviolence means we continue postponing a solution to the American black man's problem just to avoid violence. You feel me? It's time to wake up. I don't know how else. It's, it's in me to fight. It's in me to, to raise up soldiers. It's in me that every time my feet touch the ground, the state of Florida, these crackers, they scared. I'm kind of pissed off right now that the state of Florida ain't on fire. This could not have happened in L.A. Because some brothers up there are not scared to riot. This could not have happened in St. Petersburg, Florida, where the, the black men over there ain't scared to kill a cracker. This is real. We're attacked anywhere in the world. We would defend ourselves by any means necessary. We are proposing and pushing for our people that you hit them in the pocket where it hurts. You starve capitalism. Since this racism that's being perpetuated and this brutality that's being perpetuated and this murder that's being perpetuated is built on the table legs of capitalism, you got to starve capitalism. And an act of war has been declared on us. We, we don't have no choice but to fight. But I, I want to say that we have to be trained how to fight. See, the whole purpose of the maneuvers that's happening in Sanford is to train in self-defense because many of us think we're prepared for a battle just like many of us think we're prepared for a fight. But if you are not training, if you're not stocking up water, if you're not stocking up food, if you're not stocking up weapons and artillery and survival, books and gas masks and flashlights and canteens and uh, re ready-to-eat meals and all that, thing. if you're not stocking that up, I don't know how serious we are right now. Absolutely, we want the complete removal of capitalism. Why? Because capitalism sets up a class structure and a class society, as I said in the beginning of the haves and have-nots, that is the pivotal point is racism. It is racism that keeps and perpetuates a capitalistic motion. It sounds like almost everybody else, from Francis Fox Piven to Van Jones, I mean, they are inciting riots. They are openly and clearing, clearly calling for the murder of white people. They're calling. You want to talk about Target. Remember when Sarah Palin had a little Target and said, hey, we want to Target this county, this district. What do you think this is? And where is the media on it? Where's the DOJ? Where's the president? Silent. Let me give you the latest on the Trayvon Martin case. We now have neo-Nazis patrolling Sanford saying they're ready. They'll be painted as white right wing. They're not. Remember the train track episode that we did when we were on Fox, and we've done it several times. I told you the two sides of uh, of uh, power in Europe. One is a, a Nazi, you know, a, 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 a dictator uh, and fascist, and the other is communist. Well, that's what you have here. The Nazis are the National Socialist Party. Finally, we have one more thing. On the other side of the scale is this guy again. Back in the news, Reverend Jeremiah Wright, in his most recent survey, a sermon, um, if you went to church yesterday, you probably heard a message about this guy named Jesus. <laughs> Boy, were you missing out. Check out what Reverend Wright had to say. And don't worry, if it sounds like hatred, he's still in the text here. Here is the president's former 20-year pastor. There are politicians who are making decisions about you, about your life, about your future, about your family, about your children. And the real tragedy is they live in a different world from your world altogether. There are people in power right now who have opinions about you based on their privilege of skin color. Either they are ignorant and arrogant, and these are graduates of Harvard and Yale setting policies for you based on the stupidity of David Hume. Emmanuel Kant, Voltaire, George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, Thomas Jefferson, a pedophile, Theodore Roosevelt, and the race of Supreme Court. Wow. The ignorance and arrogance of white supremacy, white supremacy is now controlling the world. World policy. It is shocking.
And that Thomas Jefferson guy, the Tea Partiers, they just, <laughs> they just keep talking about this guy who's a slave-owning pedophile. This guy was given an award by uh, Louis Farrakhan, their buddies. Um, Barack Obama, I'm sorry, he found Jesus through this guy. And here's atheist Bill Ayers chumming it up with Reverend Wright recently. See, it's all the same people. And they're all the people that we've been told as individuals to dismiss over and over again. And Bill Ayers, oh, he just got out of, he has no power, he's just in a think tank. Van Jones, he's a low-level staffer. Reverend Wright, Obama was never there, and when he did, he didn't listen. Francis Fox Piven, she's a sweet little old lady baking cookies, yet they keep popping up. And they all are connected to each other, and they're all saying the same things. Oh, please. Oh, the Black Panthers, they've been around forever. Do not dismiss them. They are all waging an all-out war on capitalism and the Constitution. They are all connected. The Black Panthers and the Nation of Islam. The Black Panthers and Al Sharpton connected. We're doing a special on Thursday that you can't afford to miss on uh, the Nation of Islam. Please, please tell someone to watch this network on Thursday. It's important that you know it. Bringing a firearm into your home is one of the most important decisions you can make. If you are considering gun ownership, CheaperThanDirt.com is here to help you make a responsible and informed choice. We understand it is a personal decision how you choose to protect your family. We offer thousands of choices of firearms, ammunition, and accessories to suit your individual needs. Be responsible, be proactive, and exercise your Second Amendment right. Find us online at CheaperThanDirt.com. That's CheaperThanDirt.com.